Hello and welcome to the Airgun Ballistics 101 series. In the previous video, we took a look at recoil dynamics and harmonics, which was quite a complicated topic, but I think today's topic is probably even more complicated. So I'd really suggest listening very carefully and perhaps even taking some notes. We're going to be talking about barrels and twist rates today. And while this topic still technically falls under the internal ballistics, section of the series, we are going to be dabbling in quite a bit of external ballistics today because you just cannot talk about barrels without speaking about the barrel's effect on pellets flight. So to launch this one, I thought we'd begin by looking at some basic terminologies and rifling is the first term you should know. Here's a cross section of a typical rifled barrel. You can see that the barrel has grooves in it which grip the pellet and cause it to rotate as it moves through. Rifling is basically the collective name we give to the lands and grooves inside a barrel. Now barrels are designed with different twist rates and we determine the twist rate by looking at what length of barrel we need to rotate a pellet 360 degrees. So for example, if it takes 12 inches for a pellet to go all the way around and get back to the same position it started at, then we say that the barrel has a one in 12 twist rate. And the last two things we're going to look at is the choke, which is a section of the barrel right towards the muzzle end, which is slightly tighter than the rest, and the crown, which is the very end of the barrel. These parts are extremely important because they are the last points of contact that a pellet will have with the barrel, and as a result, they need to be absolutely flawless. So now that we've got the terminologies done and dusted, let's look at the different kinds of barrels that you'll find in, in PCP air guns. Now the first one you could possibly find is a smoothbore barrel, but we're gonna just cross that one off immediately because it's been proven time and time again that a smoothbore barrel just will not give you the kind of accuracy you need for precision shooting. The second type of barrel we're gonna look at is the traditional rifle barrel, and this basically has lands and grooves running all the way from the breech end of the barrel where the pellet is inserted all the way to the, the muzzle of the barrel. And this is definitely the most popular kind of barrel. There are many companies that, that make them. Lothar, Walther, CZ, BSA, Varrock, just to name a few. And the last one we're gonna look at is the smooth twist barrel made by FX. And I suppose you could call this a sort of hybrid because the majority of the barrel is actually smooth bore. But then right towards the end, there's a machine that's actually gripped the barrel and twisted it from the outside. And this slight twist gives the, the pellet a little bit of rotation as it leaves the barrel. So why is spin stabilization important? Well, this is an extremely interesting question because technically a pellet should not require much of a spin to actually keep it flying straight. There's a huge difference between the design of a bullet and a pellet. A bullet has its center of pressure in front of its center of gravity and as a result there are two opposing forces that are constantly wanting to flip the bullet around and in order to overcome this you have to shoot a bullet through a rifled barrel to give it gyroscopic stability. Diablo pellets on the other hand which are the pellets that most people shoot with were actually designed for smoothbore air guns more than 100 years ago and as a result, they are designed to be drag stabilized. In other words, their center of pressure is actually behind their center of gravity. These forces aren't trying to flip the pellet around. In fact, they're actually working together to keep the pellet flying straight. You've got to picture a, a Diablo pellet like a, like a dart or an arrow. The nose is constantly wanting to face in the direction that the projectile is flying. If you throw an arrow backwards or if you throw it sideways, it's gonna end up going straight all by itself and a Diablo pellet works exactly the same as that. So if pellets are drag stabilized, then why does a smoothbore barrel not work in an air gun? Well, the problem actually occurs as the pellet leaves the muzzle of the barrel. There's a powerful blast of air behind it and the skirt of the pellet actually acts like a, like a cup or a parachute. It catches that blast of air and for a split second, that air behind it wants to kind of flip it around. This causes the pellet to fly skew just for a, a slight moment. And as it gets further from the barrel, it does eventually right itself. But by that time, it's already kind of been pushed off course and it's too late. It's lost its accuracy. 
So what um, rafting does is it gives that, that pellet spin stabilization so that it is able to overcome that force from behind that wants to throw it off. It keeps itself straight. So we've answered the question of why spin stabilization is important, but now we're faced with perhaps an even more important question, and that is why not just have a really fast twist rate in all barrels? You know, what are the drawbacks to, to that? And if there are drawbacks, what is the optimum twist rate? Now, I can promise you that about 99% of barrel manufacturers haven't done their, their maths. They've just gone with the traditional, you know, one in 16, one in 18 twist rate that's been the same for about 100 years. And they haven't done their own research. And it frustrates me because this is incredibly important. There are major drawbacks to having your twist rate too high. And I would like to run through those right now so that I can educate you guys. So the first thing that can happen is that you can have an unbalanced pellet. This can be because of an air pocket in the lead or perhaps a slight dent in the skirt. But either way, the pellet's weight is not evenly distributed around its axis. When that pellet starts spinning really fast, it starts to wobble and it spirals out of control. And this is where your flyers come from. The second thing that can happen is that the pellet becomes overstabilized and it loses its tractability. Now we're going to talk about the, the tractability of a projectile more in another episode, but basically tractability is a projectile's ability to keep its nose following the exact flight path in all times um, during its flight. This is especially important when shooting long range with an air gun because the trajectory can be quite loopy. A pellet out of a smoothbore rifle won't have any problem with tractability, but if the twist rate is too high, the pellet becomes so stable that the nose refuses to follow the trajectory of the shot like it should. So out at 100 yards, for example, that pellet isn't actually flying in the same direction that you fired it. When you took the shot, your barrel was facing a certain direction or a certain angle, but as that pellet moved along its flight path, it started dropping down. And what would happen if your pellet's on its way down, but the nose is still facing upwards? That's a problem because the pellet isn't flying with its nose in the front, it's flying at a slight angle and this causes all kinds of issues. Firstly, it's going to have a lot more drag, so it's going to lose velocity and energy quickly and secondly, it's going to experience something called the Magnus effect. The Magnus effect is what allows tennis players to put topspin on a ball. By spinning the ball, they are creating more drag on one side and this pushes a ball in a certain direction. The same rule applies to pellets that are spinning. Ever wondered why a crosswind can cause a point of impact shift upwards or downwards? That, my friends, is the Magnus effect in action and naturally, the faster a pellet is spinning, the more it's going to drift. The Magnus effect is especially problematic when your pellet loses its tractability. So, if your twist rate is too high and you're shooting at really long ranges, you are more than likely to see that pellet drift off to either side of where you're actually aiming. Um, your group might still be good, but the group isn't going to be in the location that you expect it to be, and this can get extremely frustrating. So if your rifle is perfectly zeroed at 50 yards, but your point of impact is a few centimeters left or right at 100 yards, your barrel's twist rate could be too high. It's a good test to do. Just make sure there's no wind. And this is where I want to bring the smooth twist barrel in because Frederick Axelson of FX was actually smart enough to think of these things when he designed these barrels. While most companies, you know, even good companies like, like Lothar Walther that make great barrels are sticking with sort of generic twist rate, um, FX has done their maths and they've designed their barrels with twist rates that are specific to the caliber and the velocity that, that the gun's gonna be shooting at. And for that reason, you'll see the smooth twist barrels performing really well out at long range. They keep the, those pellets keep their tractability. They don't lose their stability because of the, the twist being too fast. You know, the balance is right. A generic 1 in 16, 1 in 18, 1 in 20 rifled barrel may perform extremely well at 25 meters, maybe even 50 meters. But what people tend to forget is that because of a pellet's hard drag design, it loses its velocity extremely quickly, but there's very little drag in the rotation of the pellet, so it's still rotating just as fast when it's out at long range. What this means is that when straight out the barrel, it might take, let's say, 16 inches 
for the pellet to do one revolution. Because it's moving much slower downrange, it might take only 10 inches. So the ratio of that pellet's spin to the speed of the pellet is very different. And this is where the problems creep in. Most air gun manufacturers don't necessarily think of these things because they might test their barrels at 20 meters or 50 meters. So they don't necessarily push it out further. What's great about the smooth twist barrel is that it gives that pellet just enough spin to overcome the initial wobble out of the muzzle and then allows the pellet to stabilize itself as it continues with its flight. And in my opinion, this is probably the best design for anyone that wants to get the most out of their gun at long range. A barrel's job is not just to stabilize a pellet, but also to create space in which the pellet can accelerate. Now, a pellet will accelerate slower out of a low pressure rifle. Um, and that means that if you want the pellet to get up to a certain speed, you may require a longer barrel length. Rifles that operate at higher working pressures, like my Daystate Wolverine, for example, which works between 220 and 180 bar, can get away with having shorter barrels because you don't need as much space for the pellet to accelerate to its, its full speed. This is my Daystate Wolverine barrel over here, and you can see it's a fair bit shorter than my barrel from the FX Impact. Many, many barrels are choked, and this is basically to ensure that the pellet is gripping the barrel correctly at the time that it leaves the muzzle. And problems can arise if the choke is either too tight or too rough because it can start pulling pieces of lead off the pellet and fouling up the inside of the barrel and you'll just lose accuracy. Some barrels with tight rough chokes like some of the CZ barrels that I've shot with have to be cleaned quite often if you want to get any sort of accuracy from them. The crown of the barrel is also incredibly important because if it isn't milled well, it can cause the pellet to leave the barrel improperly. Basically, the crown has to be 100% square with the barrel because if it isn't, then as the pellet leaves the barrel, air will escape from one side of the skirt um, before the other side. And even this nanosecond of inconsistency will cause the pellet to be thrown a little bit off its axis. Most barrel manufacturers taper their crowns at an angle to prevent this from happening. But despite this, there are some barrels that need work done on their crowns because the quality just wasn't there and the barrel wasn't performing like it should. Yo, that was complicated. And that is where we're gonna bring this one to a close. Uh, if you had trouble following at any point, just reload the video, watch it again, make some notes, you know, let it sink in and hopefully it will you know, help you to gain some understanding of the subject. Um, next week, we're gonna be looking at something that is way simpler than this. We're going to be taking a look at caliber selection, and hopefully that one will be, you know, a little bit of a break in, in terms of how, how complicated it is and how easy it is to follow. So, hope you enjoyed this one, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.